turns and pull-offs. Very useful, very cool technique. And I think uh, there's many ways to build it, but I want to show you a very simple way, which is just to develop the basic hammer run and pull-off technique with all of your fingers. The simplest one would be between uh, your first finger and, for example, your second finger. Most people can do that because those fingers are strong. But then as you start to go out and maybe use your third finger, it gets a little bit weaker, but you've got to get it. You gotta have to have it in time or you can control the, the sound of the note so it's nice. And the, keep the tempo even. Uh, and then of course the pinky, the weakest finger, but you can get it. The next thing is to do those pull-offs, but this time using your second finger as sort of the anchor note. So uh, let's do A with the second finger, and we'll do uh, the pinky. And now let's try the two weakest fingers, the third and the fourth. We'll go between the B and the C. And if you can get a good tone out of those, you're really in good shape. So now that you've got those done, uh, let's work on some slightly more complicated patterns that are going to be a little more musical and interesting sounding. Uh, this one sounds like this. It's got six notes. They sound like uh, they're, they're C-A-B, C-B-A. Obviously very good for strengthening those last two fingers. Let's uh, add in four notes that introduce this. I want to start on the B string and play three notes. That's E, F sharp, and G. And I'm going to add an A note on the high E string and then do the lick that we just learned. So all together, that's the lick. To make a little more out of it, I want to descend all the way down, back to the bottom, and without repeating that E note, start cycling the lick. So it'll sound like this very slowly. And then that E is where you start over again without repeating it. So let's do it a little quicker. I'm pausing in between so you can get the sound of that pattern in your ears and in your head. But then, like I keep saying, I don't want to repeat the E, and this time I'm going to cycle it without stopping. I'm going to add another sequence to this that I think is very important. This is five notes that descend. It's played with an upstroke, a down, two pull-offs, and another picked note on the bottom. So it would be up, down, pull-off, pull-off, and down. Up, down, down, like that with some pull-offs in the middle. Again, I'm putting a space so you can get it in your head. But in reality, I don't stop and I just cycle it over and over. So let's combine those two licks together. Let's see if we can do that. That's a good way you can get a basic scale 
So you have sort of a left hand freak out. You know? And just practice it a lot. Make sure you have your basic ones down. That'll build up strength and then practice the other ones slow. Very even with good tone. Use your ears to make sure the tone is the way you like it. And your fingers will follow. I want to talk to you about arpeggios. And uh, in the world of guitar, many people use the sweep picking technique for arpeggios. And I've done it myself, but I really prefer a lot of other methods. So I want to introduce you to those and we'll let the sweepers of the world take care of the sweeps. Um, my favorite way of doing arpeggios is string skipping. There's a couple different ways to string skip. Um, the most basic one I would want to show you would be this E minor triad. Two notes on the E string, and then two notes on the G string, and then one note on the D string. I'm doing that with three downstrokes, and all the rest of the notes are pulled off. I like those pull offs because they make the lick sound very smooth and natural. And that kind of shape allows me to do different phrases, hammer-ons and pull-offs. To me, that kind of phrasing is, is very natural and very musical and very useful in tempo. So experiment with using those in different tempos in your music. You know, if you're... And it's a cool way of throwing in arpeggios with almost more of a pentatonic style of phrasing. Um, another way of doing arpeggios is to take a short or small shape, for example, uh, this shape. Very simple, I'm using the same frets, 7 and 10, on the low E and low A strings. And this happens to be all the notes in an E minor 7th arpeggio. It's got the root and the third, it's got the fifth and the seventh, that's all you need. So let's take it up an octave and start it here. Same fingering shape, just an octave higher. And once again up an octave. So real slow. This is a really cool way of visualizing how to play an arpeggio. Because you have the same shape in three places. And all you have to do to be able to find those places is know where your octaves are. So I'm looking for the B here, here, and here. And you can even practice moving your first finger between those B notes. That way your hand gets used to the technique and your eye gets used to visualizing that position shift in order to make that arpeggio happen. Let me show you a couple more examples because this is a really good technique for even more complex seventh arpeggios. For example, uh, how often do you play a C sharp minor seven flat five arpeggio? Probably not very often, but that's because you don't know one, or at least I didn't until I learned this very 